Howdy, folks, how are y'all doing? My name is Cub, and welcome back to another episode of My Guide to Sky Factory 3. Now, before we get going, uh, we're going to start off with a little bit of a let's build here while I explain why this video took so long to make. I could not get the Sky Factory to launch when I tried to record this last week. I vented my frustration on Twitter, and fortunately, longtime supporter of the channel, Jordan Allen, ch uh, chipped in and, and said that maybe it was the NVIDIA drivers, and it was. So I got those rolled back, and I got the game working, but then I couldn't get the Minecraft replay mod to work with the latest version of Sky Factory 3. So I did a little digging on the replay mod forums and found out that it's a mod called Surge that's installed in Sky Factory 3. It's a performance mod. It doesn't really add anything, like no items to the game or anything like that. So I went ahead and removed it so we can get this beautiful panning vista whatever the correct term for this sort of a shot is, of me expanding the base, adding some things, and collecting some resources. And without any further ado, howdy, look at that, it's the sunrise! Well, let's just go ahead and get into this episode, because it's a long time coming, and I'm sure you're tired of hearing me jabber on. Now, like I said, we'll, we'll cover some of the things I was doing earlier. Don't, don't worry about that over there, we'll cover it in a minute. Now, last time, I teased that I was looking for a solution to this colossal situation I'd found myself in. We have all these chests and all these items and I mean really we needed a better storage solution. I wasn't trying to be vague. I wasn't trying to be coy. I was trying to hint at the fact that we're going to be looking at the colossal chests mod but that didn't stop some people from not catching on to that and suggesting we look at it anyway. So thank you for your suggestions even though I basically spelled it out last episode. You guys... You guys are good. I like you. I, I worry about some of you, but I do I do like you, so thank you for that. So we're going to be looking today at the wooden colossal chests. There's some other versions you can build, which basically just hold more items, but they require a lot of iron, a lot of gold, a lot of diamonds. They've also got... What is this? Um, is, that all, is that all? What? I thought we had... Uh what are the other- iron, silver, gold, diamond, I thought there was another- I thought that we had like a- co Oh, copper! Yeah, right there. Cool. Uh, where's the copper though? Oh, right there. Uh, it's the very first one. I guess I didn't click on it. We're gonna be looking at wood though, because that's an item that we have an abundance of. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to get a whole lot of colossal chest walls. We're going to need at least one colossal chest core. And actually only one, not at least one, just one, which will require a piece of iron. And maybe an interface if you want to automate this to automatically have items placed inside the colossal chest, but I don't think we're going to be doing that today. Although we might in the future, or we might this episode, who can say? I can't say, I don't know what's going on. Let's go ahead and open this up though, and first off, we'll grab, I got a lot of spruce wood, I don't think the type of wood you use matters, we've got so many different varieties here that we can use. We'll probably just end up using the spruce, though. Let's hold on to some of these. Let's keep a good few of these, because we're going to need these blocks later. Go ahead and convert the rest of these into spruce planks. And then we're just going to make a, a loop of plank, add our wood in the middle, and that will give us the colossal walls. And we're just going to go ahead and create, like, a whole lot of these. I'm not sure how many we're actually going to need. 20? Doesn't sound like it'll be enough. It sounds like I'm going to have to go cut down some more trees. But, you know, let's just keep moving ahead with this. So we're going to need one of those colossal chest wall pieces and a piece of iron. I do believe I have a piece of iron. I don't know what I've done with it, though. There it is. I think that's the only piece of iron I've got lying around right now because we used a lot last episode. But there we go. That'll give us the core. It doesn't really matter where you put the core. I think I'll put it on the bottom because I don't really see us ever needing to get access to it. So we'll do the floor. And the smallest you can make this is 3x3x3, three by three by three, but you can also go a lot bigger. The only rule is you have to have a hollow space in the middle, so we're going to run out of these pieces. I've got a sneaking suspicion. Yeah, we're going to have to go cut down some more trees, but fortunately, that's not really an issue for us. We've got a ton of trees. The rain is a bit annoying. Going to have to do something about that, and in fact... The sound of the rain is probably the only really annoying part. That and it just makes the video feel sort of dreary. I personally enjoy rain in real life. I like it when it rains. I, I don't know why, but there's just something about that atmosphere that I find pleasant and relaxing. But but not in game. It's it's very annoying in game. It's almost like it just drags down the mood of whatever it is you're doing. Ugh, it's it's not good. We'll go ahead and store that back in there and for right now we're eating cooked silkworms i've got some carrots somewhere that i collected during that opening panning shot but i don't know where i've put them i just shoved them into a chest somewhere fortunately shoving things into chests is about to be 
a thing of the past. We're gonna put that behind us. We're gonna, just like Timon and Pumbaa, we're putting our past behind us. And uh, it does hurt that my friends never stand downwind. It's a quote. It's a quote from that movie. Boom. Look at that. Oh, unfortunate. Unfortunate that the front is over here. I would have hoped that the front would be on one of these sides, but it's okay. So how does this work? Well, right-click it. It's a giant chest, folks. It's a colossal chest. What it says it is, that's what it is. Obviously, the bigger you make this structure, the bigger the chest will be. And if you use a higher quali quality material, like the, the iron or the copper, you will also get more storage space. Look at this. Look at all the storage space in there. Well, I mean, I guess we're not hurting for storage space anymore. How many items can you fit in here? I don't actually know. Full confession time. I didn't look that up. Um, I, j I, I didn't really look up much about this mod, aside from sort of what I absolutely needed to know. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. Wait a second. Before we keep doing this... I need to do a test before we put everything that we own in there. Because I was just thinking, it would be great if we could automate this, right? Like, if we could automate it. Uh, but what if, when we break it, we lose all the items inside of it? See, these are the things you got to be mindful of when you're dealing with multi-block structures, is how do they keep track of what you've put in them? And if you break it, will you lose those things? we got to know that. we got to know that before we progress forward. So first off, let's actually build this Colossal Chest interface. It's going to require that we have one of those blocks there and some of these cobblestones here and let's get that recipe back up there click boom colossal chest interface now we need to put something in there cobblestone's cheap and we've got a lot of it we'll just throw a couple pieces in there so let's say i go over and eh, we'll go out of the way let's say we go over here and i break maybe that piece there we'll do that so we'll break this slab and then we'll break this piece out of the side Okay, so we've now broken the structure. If I put that interface on there, it, it doesn't go back together, guys. Structure error. Unexpected colossal chest structure error. What have I done? I feel like I've done a bad thing. I've broken it all. All right, so if you break that and we put this back on there, it's back to normal. Hey, okay. It keeps the cobblestone. So I would reckon as long as you leave the core down there, I'm going to assume maybe that's the secret. You got to leave the core in place. Doesn't seem to like the... Oh, there we go. Okay, it worked that time too. So I'm going to bet if we went underneath this thing and we took out the core piece, that would cause us to lose the items. We're not going to do that though. We're going to leave it be and we're going to go ahead and move this guy over there because right now we're sort of at, we've hit a limit on how much cobblestone we can collect and also just hit a limit on how much we can use that there pickaxe have to get ourselves another one i should really get ore production in overdrive i know i mentioned i was going to do that last episode but then i didn't spoilers uh we should probably look into that but if i'm not mistaken i think we can just throw a hopper right up against here uh yeah it looks like it connected up probably put this right on top there and yeah look at that okay great so now we have a chest that's going to store everything every single thing we could possibly want now the one downside to this because i know it seems like this is great we can just throw everything in there but you'll notice there's no way to actually search inside the chest what you can do is if you have something you're looking for in particular like wood if you type it out down here and then double click the search bar to turn it uh yellow it will highlight only the items that have wood in the title which I don't know. That might be helpful, but that's it's not really the best. Still, that said, this certainly beats having like 20 different chests all over the place. Wow. Okay, so we're about to have everything that we had in all of these different varied chests inside of the Oh my goodness. Okay, let's just wait a second. Let's be patient. All right. So all of these chests that we have, all of these scattered chests, even that gold in there are now stored inside of this colossal chest. And look how much room we have left. So this goes down to there. And then we've still got all this space. Incredible. Also, I think if we tap the middle mouse button, the scroll wheel. Yep, it sorts it and puts cobblestone at the top. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. That's great. Hey, now here's a question. What about this? If we put the crafting station next to it? We're doing some experimenting here, folks. Brace yourselves. If we put the crafting station next to this, can it access the inventory? No, it cannot. We'll probably leave the crafting station over here, though, because it's right next to the chest. 
which is where we're going to be getting all of our resources. So this is probably going to be our crafting hub from now on, right next to this massive colossal chest. Now that actually does it for this portion of the video. I know we didn't really spend too much time with this mod, but that's pretty much the basics of it. Again, you can build uh, better walls, and that'll increase the amount of things you can store in here. Uh, you can do more automation if you want to. You could rig it up to where all kinds of items could be piped into there. Right now, what I want to focus on, though, is getting to the nether. I tease this the last few episodes, and today we're finally going to be talking about it. Will we build a portal today? Mm, hard to say, because of course you have to have uh, you have to have obsidian in order to do that. In order to get obsidian, you just need some stone barrels. Now this is different than in previous versions of Sky Factory. I've tried it with everything I used to use. I tried it with the, the oak crucibles, the wooden barrels, the regular crucibles. It only seems to work with stone barrels, which are fortunately not difficult to build. It's just getting some stone, that's cooked stone, so cobblestone in a furnace, and some stone slabs, which is just three stone along the bottom there. That'll give you your stone barrel. So all you gotta do right, is, uh, it, just assume me this, this works. It, it's worked previously, but all you've gotta do is put your lava inside of that. Nope, that's, that's water, of course, because it's raining. Obviously, you've you've ruined the tutorial, but let's say you do put lava in it, like I've done here, and you put some water on top of that. Look at that. You got yourself some obsidian, and uh, we've got ourselves five pieces there. Now, to build the portal, I've got in my mind... Oh, no, darn it! Who would have seen that coming, honestly? What? Maybe if we take a nap, the rain will go away. Perfect. I like how even when the rain is gone, you can still hear it. Like it's silently mocking you. How do I get rid of the water that's in here now? I can't scoop it out unless it's full. Dad, dad gummit. Just gonna have to break and collect them and hope they don't fall through the world, I guess. I should have put a roof on top of them. I should have. I knew better. I, I just, listen, sometimes even I, the great Cabino, uh, can mm, drop things into the endless void. Sit down to make a video, and it just never goes right. Nothing ever, nothing ever works out the way it's supposed to. Something always goes wrong. It rains, it snows, something always, something always goes wrong. Okay, all right, look at that. We got them back, guys. It's no problem. I'm not emotionally drained after that incident or anything. It's all fine. Great, and then we just got to get our bucket of water. Now, the reason that I've put these slabs here along the side is so that the water doesn't flow all over the place and, and make a big mess, but there we go. You can also automate this process fairly easily. We might cover that in the future, but uh, 10 obsidian is more than enough for the portal we're going to build, and I think we'll build it somewhere out of the way where we don't have to deal with it because it does make an awful amount of noise. Let's build it over here next to... Actually, I don't really want to go anywhere near there, do we? That place is kind of spooky. Let's let's get some more building materials. Let's have ourselves a bit of a a bit of a build here. All right. Well, I never said it was going to be a particularly amazing build. Okay, this is good enough. We're just building a portal here. Nothing special. Somehow we ended up with eleven pieces of obsidian. I thought we only had ten. That's fine because three, six, nine, twelve is how much we're actually going to need. For the portal that I've envisioned, so one of the great things about Minecraft these days is that you can pretty much build portals however you want, and the one that I want requires 12 pieces of obsidian. This is not necessary. This is absolutely unnecessary. Beyond, don't don't fool yourself into thinking you have to build your portals like this, because you don't. This is just sort of how I, I wanted to do it, and it's my let's play, so I'll do what I want to. Now before we even bother going over there and finishing up that portal, let's go ahead and get not that, no, no stop you. You need to prioritize the iron that I know you've got hidden inside of you. Thank you very much. And we'll grab ourselves a bit of flint. We should have that. And look at this. I've already I've already started doing it. I said this wouldn't be very useful, and yet here we go. I'm, I'm using this this feature. I actually dislike that feature immensely. It's, it's not very pleasant to use. It's... it's uh, yeah, flint and steel. We've got our 12th piece of obsidian. You know what would look nice in this portal is if you could create some nice, like, angled pieces. Hence, future episode, hence. It was a tease, everyone. You know, some, some like corner pieces to go on there. But let's light this thing up. And as I've said in the past, would y'all, hey, hey, shush, shush. Good grief. As I've said in the past, if you go to the nether, you're going to go there because you want to find another fortress. And that can be a very difficult process. However, if you use the world that I used, which I recommended, um, I think I gave you all the seed in the first episode, uh, if you use that, then when you go through this portal, 
And I say this hopefully, we should end up inside of another fortress. If not, you'll have to get a lot of blocks and build out in random directions until you hopefully find one. But we're... We're hoping for the best here. Yes! Excellent! Oh! Looky there! We got a lava charm, uh, actually additions manual, some iron horse armor, a biome crystal, and a lost capacitor. Great! I don't know what any of these things do, but oh dear. We're not gonna live long. Whoa, wait, hold on. What's that? What's this? What have you done? Can I wear you? Can I put you on? Oh, I can! What do you do, lava charm? Alright, so this is from a mod called Random Things. I just took a little trip to the wiki. Hopefully with editing you didn't notice. But apparently it gives us a temporary immunity to lava. Uh, but apparently not necessarily fire. We'll see how that works. Uh, that's what this bar down here is. It will degrade if we get into lava, but it will also over time repair itself. Let's see what happens if this guy shoots me with fire. Like, out of curiosity. Oh, excuse me, sir. Yes, sir, I see that you're very interested in killing me. Um... I think it, I, I, guys, okay, yeah, okay, I was gonna say, I don't know if Minecraft, like, I, th there's some mod packs that change Minecraft 1.10 mechanics, so they don't actually use the new fighting mechanics, I don't think this is one of them, I think the 1.10 mechanics are still very much a thing, and yeah, we can still very much catch on fire, although we seem to be healing at a rapid rate, interesting, I'm playing on normal, okay, so, I mean, obviously, I was going to say, is this easy? Is this peaceful? What's going on? Maybe that is just the ring preventing us from taking too much damage from fire. In which case, awesome. But, okay, you know what? Um, it's, it's too good to last. Let's just get out of here. Uh, this has been nice, everyone. Thank you. But there you go. There's the nether. There's some useful things you can get from the nether. We'll cover that in another episode. Until then, though, let's put up maybe like a fence or something. In case something comes crawling out of the nether and we desperately wish to avoid it. Oh boy, this place has gotten dangerous. Right, this is where we build things now. I do I do so easily forget. We'll need to get some pieces of plank. There we go. And we'll also need some sticks. Two of these, two of these, and I, I guess we're going with an acacia one. Okay, I mean, it's not the first time we've used acacia. We use it over there as well. It's fine, it looks nice. It looks good with the cobblestone. Yeah, that looks a bit silly, but it'll keep things from getting to us if they crawl in here through the nether. And folks, I guess that's going to do it for this episode. This one is probably going to end up being drastically shorter than previous episodes, if you consider the running time of especially the first episode. But I hope you found it useful. We've covered colossal chests, a great way to store, well, everything. Now, it's not a great way to retrieve things. As you can tell, that's a bit of a... Ugh, that's a bit of a, an issue still. But it's good enough for now until we have enough items to do some of the more automated uh, storage setups. And also we've covered how to get obsidian and how to get to the nether. Should we? Should we discuss? I mean, there's one other thing we can do with this setup. Um, if we could find some redstone, and I'm sure we've got some pieces around here somewhere. There we go. And also get back in there. Stop this. Stop it. Stop it. What's going on? Get in. Stop. Stop it. Also a bucket. <laughs> Of water? No. Preferably not water. Oh gosh, this is impossible. Bit of lava, bit of redstone. You got some netherrack. So, you know, netherrack is useful for a lot of different things. If you take a look here, that does it for this episode. I think we're done. I think we're good. Thank you folks for watching. God bless all of you, and I'll see you next time. Bye!